Who was this man chosen by God? And he was chosen by God the Father. Who was this man chosen by God the Father, given more authority than King David and Moses? He did have more authority than the both of them. They were precursors to the Messiah. This man was associated directly with the Messiah. Who was this man? Well, he was a natural leader, absolutely. There's even a little example of that. He says one day, uh, I'm going fishing. And all the apostles get up and follow him. Well, Peter's going fishing, so I guess we're going fishing. Well, we're going fishing. And we all have friends like that. We're going to go do something. Well, I guess that's what we're doing. And out you go. <laughs> Peter was a natural leader. Uh, he was also extraordinarily impetuous. Did a lot of like, okay, and just rushed into things and then went, uh-oh, and sort of drew back from it after the fact. Because Peter's a marvelous, marvelous example of uh, of the faith just kind of grinding its way through and trying to repair our fallen nature and, but still defining. It's a wonderful mix. It's, Peter's just a wonderful example of all of this. Jesus Christ established his church for one reason, to help people get to heaven, to help men and women make right decisions in their life so they can be informed, make the correct moral choices, and get to heaven. How can we know those right moral choices? How do we know? Well, that's the role of the office of the papacy, of the pope. Every institution, and there are institutional qualities to the church, not just institutional, but certainly institutional qualities. No group of people gets together and does anything without a leader. Even people, even groups who have leaders sometimes accomplish absolutely nothing. But you are guaranteed that if there is a group and there's no leader, nothing gets done. Absolutely nothing gets done. If there is any movement towards ecumenism, if you want to call it that, or uh, um, uh, the, the unification, reunification of Christians. If there's any movement in that area that does not specifically recognize and submit to the authority of the Pope, you're wasting your time. It is because of Peter being this firm foundation that we have the church, and the church can preach and teach. That's why Jesus established this role for Peter, and it's why he picked Peter, picked a man, because he knew he was going to be going back to heaven. Jesus knew he was going to be going back to heaven, and he needed a visible head of a church because he built a visible institution on earth. That's what the role of this is, and that's what the pope is. I hear a lot when people are sort of trying to attack this teaching of the church and this, uh, this belief of the church that, you know, well, it doesn't say pope in the Bible. The pope is just an English word, uh, which comes from a Latin word, an Italian word, papa, meaning father. That's all it is. It's not the, it's whatever you call him doesn't alter his authority. His authority is that he is the head of the apostles. And the succession, the question of succession that you're getting at is that Jesus didn't establish the church to be stagnant in a moment of time just for those people. He established a church so that it would, it would live in a certain way with Christ himself as the invisible head of the church and the Pope being the visible head of the church. So Christ and the Holy Spirit remain constant throughout the church throughout history. But as we all know just from our own lives, we as finite human beings come into history and pass out of history. But the church must remain because Christ said it would.